Welcome to Focus on Health, a series of educational programs highlighting current health issues sponsored by the School of Nursing at Salisbury University. I'm Dr. Mary DiBartolo, Professor of Nursing at Salisbury University and host of the program. We're here at MAC for a Cooking, on, cooking for Health segment and I welcome, this is the first time you've been on the cooking program. Yes, it is. Yep. Is Gwyneth Bradshaw. Mm -hmm. And you are a dietitian yes. and you work at Fixer Upper Fitness. Yes, ma'am, you got it. And you are here, um, we did a studio program not too long ago mm -hmm. where you talked about probiotics, prebiotics. Mm -hmm. So now we're going to actually make some dishes or right. items with probiotics or prebiotics in them. Absolutely. So the thing about probiotics is that since they have live bacteria in them, you can't do a lot of real cooking with probiotics or else the bacteria would die and that ruins the point of probiotics. Um, so the first recipe we have is a blueberry banana smoothie. Um, bananas are actually a great source of prebiotics, which means it has the right kind of fiber and um, carbohydrates that actually feed the bacteria in your stomach. So this makes it a perfect combination of probiotics in the kefir and prebiotics um, in the banana. I didn't know that about bananas. Yeah. <laughs> Another reason to have bananas. Exactly, correct? exactly. They're very healthy. They are. Um, so if kefir is kind of an odd ingredient, it's like yogurt except it has even more probiotic cultures. Um, it's a little thicker than uh, milk but thinner than yogurt so it's usually in a container like this. Um, you can buy it in a larger container. Yes, I've seen yep. it. Yep. Um, and then, of course, a beautiful bowl of berries mm -hmm. here. We know yep. how good berries oh, are. Oh, yeah, lots you. of antioxidants. Um, we love berries for that reason. And you can buy them frozen mm -hmm. so they can. Yeah, especially keep in it's the winter right you. now. So, in the mm -hmm. winter, frozen berries is usually um, kind of the best way you can get them. Um, okay. yeah. well, let's so get let's, started. Let's Show do us it. how to yep. do it. All right, so we'll grab our um, kefir first. I like to shake it up before I pour it in. And then we'll open it up. So, so as you I put pour the whole container in yep, there? Yep, I put the whole container in. Um, it's about it's eight ounces. Eight ounces. Yeah. So, so if you don't cup. yeah, if you have a smaller a bigger container, you would use a cup. And then since kefir is a little thick, I do like to add a little bit of water in um, just to help the smoothie come together. This is about a cup of mixed berries, so you can see raspberries, blueberries, blackberries. But you could use just plain blueberries mm -hmm. or Oops, raspberries one. if you wanted. Mm -hmm. Or strawberries, really. You can oh, make this whatever true. you want. Um, All right. And then I use half a banana, so it's two little quarter banana pieces. Put that in there. And they're frozen? No, these are just regular, um, regular but banana. But you could put them in as frozen bananas mm -hmm. to make it nice and icy. Yeah, a little thick. icier. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But the berries are frozen, so that should be enough to kind of get this nice and cold and frozen. So we'll just blend it up. I think that might be good. Let's check it out. It looks looks good. Yeah, it's a nice um it's a beautiful color. Burgundy color, mm -hmm. yeah. Pour some out. You can still see kind of little pieces of berry in there, which is nice. All right. All right, let's give it a try. Let's check it out. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> mm, it is good. Yeah, it's good. But you can definitely taste the, the kefir giving mm -hmm. it a tartness. Yeah, too. so kefir, even though this is technically blueberry flavored, um, it just doesn't have a lot of added sugar, so it's still pretty tart. Um, and then you can buy the plain kefir as well, um, which is going to have a little more tartness, a little less flavor, but the berries and the banana really kind of sweeten it up. Right, right. Well, I guess if you bought the plain kefir, then you can use a variety of different fruits. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But the banana, I guess, can kind of go in anything. Yeah, I like banana because it adds a creaminess to your smoothie. Um, and so you could add, you know, pineapples and mangoes and make it more tropical <coughs> or, you know, berries. For, for this. Mm. That's really good. Yeah, it's quite tasty. The only thing is all the little pits in it. <laughs> a lot of people don't yeah, like Yeah, that's it. like the like blackberry the and everything because they have the small seeds in there. Mm. Well, great. Well, that's very good. Mm -hmm. So what are we making next? So next we're going to um, use kind of some great prebiotic foods and make a roasted vegetable dish. Sounds great. So it's going to be um, balsamic roasted vegetables with potatoes and leeks and onions and garlic. Okay. So we'll try that out next. All righty. Okay. <laughs> 
So Gwyneth, we're back and we're going to be making balsamic roasted vegetables yeah. featuring, featuring some prebiotics? prebiotics? Yeah, prebiotics are, um, they go hand in hand with probiotics. So prebiotics help feed the healthy um, gut bacteria that's already in your gut. So without them, the gut don't have what they need to kind of flourish. And so leeks, um, bananas like we mentioned earlier, onions, garlic, those are all great prebiotic foods. And then leeks are also a vegetable that's in season in the winter, which makes it kind of unique. A lot of vegetables and stuff are just in season in the summer. So, so are leeks healthy? Because you really don't see them used too much. No, just you like don't. potato and leek soup <laughs> is all I recall with um, leeks. But. Yeah, I don't know why they're not used more often, um, but they're just like an onion, except a little um, milder in taste. So, and they have some chemicals in them, or they're good for you in other ways? Mm -hmm, yep, um, mostly the inulin. Inulin is a type of fiber that the bacteria in your gut really um, feed on. They like that a lot. So the leeks have to be diced for this dish? Um, we're going to actually do them, sl slice them in kind of a half moon shape. Okay. So I'll show you. Um, the top part of a leek is actually really fibrous. You can feel it. It's mm -hmm. really tough. And so you really don't want to eat that part. Um, leeks are also, they're grown in a lot of sediment and dirt. So when we cut it open, it's going to have a lot of dirt kind of inside. So we just have to make sure that we wash it. So you're only going to use like the white. Yeah, we're going to use the stem part. The green mm -hmm. part there. Yep, so when okay. we prepare it, here, I'll do, sorry, one at a time. We're going to cut um, this part off at the top. It's fibrous there. And then we're going to cut the bottom part as well off, these little hairs at the bottom. So then you're left with this little piece that looks like an onion. Um, and then we're going to peel off kind of the top layer just because this is going to be pretty fibrous too and too tough to eat. So we'll put that to the side. Okay. And then from here we're going to slice it down the center so we kind of get half of it. And then we're gonna, we'll dice it into kind of little chunks. But see, you can see the dirt in there. So we're gonna mm. let it soak in some water to okay. get some of the um, sediment off. So what, half inch slice, quarter inch? Yeah, I'm gonna do like a half inch about just because um, I want it to cook evenly with the rest of the vegetables. If it's too small, it might kind of um, burn get up a little quicker. Too. Yeah. So I'm gonna do a, a little thicker than I did um, some other things. There. Okay, so then we'll scoop these up and just put them in the water and let the, some of the dirt come off. And we'll do the same thing with number two. So we'll cut the top off. See all the dirt in there. Oh, look at all that. I know. Too bad dirt's not good for you. I know, right? <laughs> that to you, thanks. And over in the middle. I think I've used leek before in some puree type soups. Where oh, you, okay. Yeah, and cook them and then you can puree them to make like a creamy base yeah. with a little bit of flavor to it. Mm -hmm. So actually that's a really great use for the st um, the leaf part of the leek. Um, you can use that for like a vegetable stock or something like that because um, it has good flavor. It's just kind of tough to, to eat. So I'll let those soak for a little while just to get some of the dirt off. And then we'll get ready um, for the rest of our kind of marinade for the vegetables. Leave that. I'm just going to move this to the side. So we're going to start with some olive oil. Um, we're going to do about a half cup of olive oil. Should it be extra virgin or can you use just regular virgin olive oil. You can use regular virgin. Um, you can also use like canola oil if you'd rather do that. Okay. I just like olive oil for oh, the sure. flavor. It's very good for you too. Mm -hmm. As far as a oily fat goes. Yeah, it's a nice healthy fat yep. for roasting vegetables. So we'll pour that in there. And then um, balsamic vinegar is going to have a lot of the flavor for our vegetables. We'll do um, about two tablespoons. Balsamic's great just to keep in the cabinet for mm -hmm. lots of different dressings and marinades and things. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, this could be your basic dressing right here for like a salad or something. And you can tell a difference between the different um, types of a vinegar. balsamic. Yeah. yeah, red wine or... Well, no, just even the balsamic in terms of how long it's aged. And oh yeah. The taste can be much better. 
we're gonna pay do a little more for it. It <laughs> yeah. makes a difference. It I does, think. a good quality um, yeah. balsamic. We're gonna do about a tablespoon of garlic. I like to always do a heaping tablespoon because I like garlic a lot. And garlic is another prebiotic food. That's good for Even you. if you use the fresh version of it versus the mince? Oh, yeah, yeah, fresh okay. is just fine. Um, I like mince just for convenience. convenience yeah. yeah. <laughs> that is a lot easier than mm -hmm. mince and garlic. And then we're going to splash in some lemon juice. I don't really measure this out, just, you know, a couple spurts there. And you can use fresh lemon if mm -hmm. you have it. Yeah, yeah, I'd probably use half a lemon if I did it fresh. Then I'm going to stir all this together. And this is what's going to coat our vegetables. The oil and the vinegar don't like to mix, so it just yeah. this helps kind of get it all together. I guess a whisk would be good, too, if you have yeah, a whisk candy. Mm -hmm. Okay, right. so then we'll just kind of put the vegetables that we use, red potatoes. How um, many? I used about six um, medium-sized red potatoes. And you're keeping the skins on because that's I where am. a lot of nutrition mm -hmm. is, correct? Yep, yep. Colors um, in vegetables kind of lead towards phytonutrients, which um, the more colorful your diet is, the more different types of nutrients you get. So. I like to use colorful versions of things when I can. And it's a lot easier versus peeling potatoes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Not one of my favorite Exactly. I like to leave the peels on potatoes when I do mashed potatoes, really just because it's way easier than peeling all those potatoes. And you're saying healthier as well with the skin. Absolutely, yep. Okay. And then um, I have about a half cup to um, three quarters cup of just sliced onions here, um, not diced. We're gonna mix all these up together. Um, and then our leeks. So we'll just kind of get some of the dirt off. And then we'll just... So you want to break them up from the yeah, half you, shape. Um, yeah, you don't want them all just being clumps, so we'll kind of get them separate. Get most of them. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's good. And then we can use our spoon again to coat all of the vegetables in the dressing that we made earlier. Can you smell that? It's, it's very it aromatic. Yeah, it smells really good. Between the garlic and the onions and the leeks. Well, I love cooking with onions and garlic. Mm -hmm. It really adds a lot of flavor. It's a great way um, if you're watching your sodium intake or something like that to flavor your food with onion powder or garlic powder. Um, or onions and garlic themselves without having to add salt to your food. We are going to sprinkle a little salt on, but if you're watching your blood pressure or something like that, um, you wouldn't really need it with all mm -hmm. this flavor. Well, I always love using the cracked pepper. It just really adds a lot oh, of flavor. Oh, yeah, definitely. You can kind of get away with not using so much <laughs> salt that way. So I just have a baking sheet here, and I've went ahead and greased it with some spray um, olive oil, and then we'll just kind of spread our vegetables, try to be kind of even about it. We're going to need a bigger tray, but we'll, well, we we'll make this spread it out a little bit, yeah. Because it's best to have it in, in one layer so it all cooks off. Yeah, but it's pretty good. That's not bad. No. All right. And then I just like to um, crack some pepper and some salt all over the whole thing. Salt just brings out some of the natural flavors in there. Now I guess if you make a large tray like this and serve it, people can add a little more salt or pepper as they yeah, like. To I taste. always like to be careful with putting too yes. much in. <laughs> yep, I, I um, yeah. do the same thing. Um, so we're going to cook this at 400 degrees for about 20, 25 minutes. Um, just keep an eye on it depending on how big your chunks of vegetables are and Should things. Should you stir it halfway through? or um, If you want, yeah, you can. Um, Personally, I kind of like some pieces that are a little bit maybe more um, crunchy, crunchy yeah. and you know softer. Mm -hmm. So I like to kind of leave it in place, and then you naturally get some of that. But you can stir it if you want it more evenly baked. Very nice. All right. Okay. So we'll put it in the oven. That looks delicious. Yum. All right. Oops. There we go. Um, so yep, you can see it's like got a nice, um, you know. Roasted Some look of it's to a it, crustier than a little crispier. Yeah, yeah, we didn't stir it, but um, some roasted okay. potatoes, a little bit of leek in there, some onion. Mm -hmm. Now you can um, add some other vegetables or substitute out. Say, oh yeah, some Brussels sprouts. What about cutting some? That fresh would be Brussels really, really good. In half mm -hmm. 
I love those with balsamic. Oh yeah, I mean really this can be used for a lot of different vegetables. You can do different um, onions, you could do red, red onions instead if you want more color. Um, you could do roasted broccoli or carrots or lots of other things here as well. Because leeks are like onions where they just give that nice flavor to it. Can um, you use like uh, like the Yukon gold mm -hmm, potatoes mm -hmm, yep. and then the red onion and then some green? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's very lots of things. You uh huh. Can do. You could steam even like leafy greens like spinach or kale and then roast that as well to give that a nice crisp as well. Nice. Well, yeah. Let's give it a try. All right, it's gonna be hot. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, let's get some leek in there. Yeah, I'm curious to try the leek. Yeah. A little piece of that. Mmm, that's really good. Yeah, I the like that a lot. The meat really adds a nice touch mm -hmm. to it. Yeah, because you can even tell between the leek and the onion, the leeks have a little bit more fiber. It's a little like chewier kind of, and that's why it's a great prebiotic food. Now I know you're going to provide us a recipe, mm -hmm. so we yep. can put post it at the end of the program. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, you know, we'll remind people that you can really be flexible with this. Mm -hmm. You had the oven at 400, yep, and 400, you bake it for about 20 minutes, 20, 25 minutes. Yeah, and absolutely. That should work for most veggies, correct? Yeah, it should. Yep. Especially I even the love roasted ones. carrots. Yeah, that would be really yes, nice. The carrots would be yummy. Or even if you want to be adventurous, um, this is a great way to try new vegetables too. Um, it's a standard vegetable, so if you want to try, you know, parsnips or turnips or even like roasted radishes, things like that, that might be fun to introduce some new vegetables like we did with the leeks in this recipe. Even um, broccoli and cauliflower, mm -hmm. I've had that. Yeah. Um, it's very good, especially with the balsamic mm -hmm. and the olive oil. Oh, yeah. And then you can um, all, all those winter helps. squashes, butternut squash. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Really, I mean, name a vegetable, I think you could put it in this recipe. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, for you're welcome so much. <laughs> really learned a lot, and of Good. course, reinforcing the importance of trying to integrate prebiotics and probiotics into Absolutely. your diet because it's so very healthy. Mm -hmm. Yep, great for your gut, which can help um, weight management. It can help with gut health, um, any sort of um, chronic disease with your gut. Um, probiotics are great for that. And always eat them. <laughs> Eating is better than taking a supplement. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, thanks again. Yep, you're welcome. Yep. And thank you for joining us for this edition of Focus on Health, here on PAC-14.